Hello, YouTube. Now, I have just read this. I'll acknowledge, I've never really been overtly into comics. I sort of occasionally read them when they're not in the middle of a story arc so that I don't understand what's going on. I mean, so that I do understand what's going on. Um, and I ordered this because there was a lot of media hype about it before it came out. I saw things shared on my Facebook wall about it. And I saw how much critics were praising it. Spoilers, by the way. And also, by the way, I have numerous problems with it. Firstly, I'm going to start talking about the... I'm going to start complaining about the art, particularly the cover. My goodness, this is misleading. Um, so we see Batman fighting the Justice League. Note he's fighting them all at once. And he is being grabbed by Green Lantern's hand whilst punching Cyborg in the face. Badass though that looks, Green Lantern is not in this book. And Cyborg is not in this book. Okay. Uh, I'm not doing the story yet. The story comes later. Because as I've said, there are spoilers. Um, <clears throat> there's, um, well... Batman's face looks horrendously gormless in the majority of the panels, I will say. Um, I mean, look, look at these expressions. Can you imagine this face? Say, oh, for goodness sake. I'm sorry, I'm trying to manoeuvre this and I can't see where it's, where, what it is. But could you imagine this face saying anything other than boo? I couldn't. No offence. And... There's another problem, a much more serious problem, and that's that his nose, the shape of his nose, changes in between ch in between panels. Now, I know a lot of people really like Greg Capullo's artwork, but look, in this panel, his nose is quite sharply pointing downwards, as it is in numerous other panels. This one, for example, is also quite sharply pointing downwards, but then... If we look on this page, his nose here is pointing, sort of jutting out more. And look at this one. It's jutting out at about 45 degrees. It's doing that, pretty much. I mean, come on. His nose is doing that in between panels. It's completely changing shape. How did that get past the editors? Did they not notice that his nose changed shape in between panels, but that's not a serious problem. Okay, it is, but it's not an uber serious problem. Another complaint about it is that Superman looks exactly the same as Batman, in his face, I mean. He's drawn exactly the same. If you look at pictures of Batman's face and pictures of Superman's face, there is no difference at all except for two sort of wrinkles on Superman's face, which aren't always even there. Okay, those were my complaints about the artwork. Boy, this is going to be hard. Now I'm going to have to complain about the story. And by boy, this is going to be hard, I don't mean it's going to be hard to complain about the story. Because if I thought this was good and that I was going to struggle to think of problems with the story, then I wouldn't be reviewing it. I think this is an exceptionally bad story. <clears throat> and... The first page is talking about a theatre in Gotham. That serves nothing for the remainder of the plot. Um, we then learn that Gotham is being attacked by gas, or supposedly under a gas attack, and they and that the gas is apparently harmless. Um, and basically, we then see a giant robot which is saying. Come on then, it's just you and me now. You think you can take me here in my city? Then step into the ring. And then we see Batman saying, Welcome to Gotham. Of course, when I say a giant robot, I'm simply saying what I thought it was. Turned out that was Batman in the giant bat suit that's robotic, which is all explained later. 
So then we get a title page, which is completely pointless since there's a cover, but oh well, we get a title page um, saying Batman Endgame Part 1. And then we get this. And my goodness, these two pages complete are a complete waste of time. There is a page of Batman having a nightmare about what I can only imagine is the world getting invaded by salps. Um, and we also see again Capullo's problem with noses because I think it's Bluebird here. Her mask does not allow her to even have a nose based on its shape. <sighs> I'm sorry, I should not keep complaining about this guy's artwork, but it's just not great, I'm sorry. With noses, I mean. Noses are a problem for you if you're reading this, Greg. Just, just saying. <laughs> sort them out. Okay, basically, so it turned out that that entire page was just a dream which was brought on by a particularly bad uh, strain of Scarecrow's fear gas. And also, and also, there's a little sort of scene about the new place that Gotham and Alfred, uh, sorry, uh, that Bruce and Alfred have got because it's, um, well, because they're not in Wayne Manor anymore because I think it's Arkham Asylum now. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> basically, the entire scene of him getting up and the entire, pa two, these two pages, Aside from to introduce things in the flat, the whole thing of him being recovering from Scarecrow's fear toxin, that's never brought up again. So this entire page, which could have been brought, this which could have been focused on actually advancing the story, is just a pointless mass of action and... What? It, it serves nothing. It does nothing for the story at all. So... Then, all of a sudden, Wonder Woman blasts through his reinforced windows and tries to kill him. Um, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Bruce is being attacked by Wonder Woman. Um, I'll just sort of say some of the dialogue here. You're only prolonging the inevitable, Bruce. Sorry, I can't do a woman's voice. Damn it, will you just talk to me? What the hell is going on? It's simple, Bruce. The League is here to do something we've wanted to do for a long time. Kill you! Bruce! Bruce! Are you okay? What the bloody hell is she? Oh, sorry, no, wait, that was Julia. <laughs> I just read that as Alfred. Anyway, so yeah, Julia asks what the bloody hell uh, Wonder Woman's doing. Uh, it turns out, yes, uh, Wonder Woman's trying to kill him. He says, um... Basically, and um, Bruce uh, uh, asks Alfred to release gas into the into Gotham so that it's evacuated to save the people around Gotham. It's in this double page spread now where uh, he's filled the filled the city with gas, so everyone's evacuated and put the suit on, where we have some real issues. And the issues start um, sort of towards the end of his fight with Wonder Woman. I mean, okay, this 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 see this thing here. I know I complained about your artwork, but she just looks so freaking crazy. That could have been, that just almost looks like Azula levels of crazy. Trust is for fools. Fear is the only reliable way. Um, but anyway, here's the problem. The next page, Wonder Woman cuts Batman's robot suit's arm off, and then stabs Batman in the stomach, and we see blood being released from the suit. Uh, Bruce says, Diana, why? Why? And we have blood clearly spattering out of Bruce's mouth. And then we see Diana standing over Bruce in the suit, apparently just about to die. And she says, shh, just let it go dark, Bruce. Just let it go dark. But then in the next panel, guess what? The arm that she cut off of his suit is mysteriously back on his suit. Pre-continuity! 
It's not that they forgot. It's not that they confused the arm or anything. Both the arms are still there, even though she plainly just cut one off in the next previous page. And even though she clearly stabbed him in the stomach and he was coughing up blood, he's still completely able to fight. And look, just in the next panel, all the blood that was on his face is completely gone, as if by magic. And it's not like we can wipe his face. Where did it go? Where did it go, Greg Capullo? Why did you forget this? Why? It's a... Okay. Okay, so then Batman explains that he has something called the Blind of Veils. And because she's a warrior of truth, the only way to beat her, her is with a lie. And apparently this blind, which isn't a blind, it's basically a lasso, is... Basically, I don't get it. It doesn't make sense. It looks like he throws it around her, although we never actually see him throw it. It just appears around her. And what? Because she's a warrior of truth and that's a lie, supposedly, even though it's just an inverted lasso of truth. She now, what, can't do anything? It may now that's what I call strange. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. She just stops fighting because he throws a bit of string over that we never even see him throw over because how can he throw over it when he's on the floor? Okay. Okay, so because of that, Wonder Woman inexplicably stops attacking him because she has some string on her, which if she simply moves will probably fall off her shoulder. Then he gets attacked by the Flash. And he randomly shouts, yeet! I'm not kidding, look. Yeet! There's more of it, but yeah. He gets attacked by the Flash, who starts tearing, who randomly tears the emblem off his giant suit. And then... Okay, yeah, there's a lot of words that are completely pointless. Basically, Batman shoots a lubricant at the Flash, and the Flash slips and crashes into a giant and crashes into a block of flats, completely destroying it. My problem with this is a you could very easily have just killed your friend the Flash, and b it's explicitly stated in the news report that not all of the area was evacuated. Therefore, you could pro very possibly have killed hundreds of people who might still be in that flat. At very least, there are probably still some people in the top of that flat where the gas won't reach. So you may very well have killed some people. Our hero, everybody, Batman. He he throw he uh, <laughs> he lets people get killed when someone crashes into a building. Okay, and then, okay, now, I just want to say this here, I have nothing against Aquaman, but he's not really perceived as being very badass, even though they've been really trying to make him more badass lately. Well, I thought they had, I thought DC had, and I know that in the, the early 2000s, the Justice League TV series actually successfully made him badass. I don't know anything about what's going on in the New 52 with the Justice League, but Aquaman gets taken down in one panel. Well, sorry, three panels. Look, he appears, Batman squirts him with some, um, what is it, magnesium carbonate, at foam, and he's on the floor. And that's it. He just can't move and he's not... That's it. Aquaman, king of the seven seas. Then Alfred and Julia call him to say that so, to say that they've picked up something big on their scanners coming right at him. And here's when the story really starts to go. Ugh. So we hear a boom, and he gets shot into the theatre, the same theatre that was pointlessly given a backstory on in the waste of a page earlier, and. Look at this. It's Superman, everybody. Da-da-da, da-da-da. And his eyes are emitting their lasers for no obvious reason, considering he's not about to use them. And then we get this interesting dialogue. Hello, Bruce. Sorry about your little Justice Buster suit. Clark, um, please. See through this and talk to me. Who did this to you? Who? 
Well, Bruce. And then all of the members of the Justice League who are there randomly start laughing after he says, It's actually sort of funny. No, not him, says Batman. Oh yes, Bruce. And no one's gonna save you this time. <laughs> okay, that panel is freaking awesome. Even though the writer made Superman look exactly the same as he made Batman look, that expression and the fact that it's revealing that it's the Joker behind this, that is freaking awesome. But there's a problem. This is supposed to be a twist surprise ending. Problem? Yes. Warner Brothers marketed, well, DC marketed this comic on the fact that the Joker was coming back after a two-year absence. How can you market something on a surprise ending? It's not a surprise anymore. It ruins the whole point in marketing it on that ending. It makes no sense. I mean... The fact that the Joker was coming back and it was the start of a new, uh, the start of a new story arc are the only reasons I bought this comic, and I was very excited about it. And I heard what people said about it, but this has some serious story problems. Not least about, not not least the whole things about the whole ba about him being stabbed and his arm and his suit's arm being cut off, only for it to magically reappear in the next panel. But my goodness, this is disappointing. But the story isn't finished. You see, there's also a fantastic section. Yep, I'm, I'm complimenting this bit by James Tinian um, called The Pale Man, um, which is all about uh, a doctor from Arkham Manor. Uh, she's, um, she goes home under the advice from her friend Eric Border, uh, who from what I gather actually works at the manor as well and is a friend of hers. Um, because, and he advises her to go home because he doesn't want her to be harmed by five serial killers who have escaped from Arkham. Unfortunately, the five serial killers are at her house, and it turns out they've been told by the Joker to tell stories about... Well, I don't know what about. It's not really explained. But everyone of the five, oh, everyone of the six, because it includes the Doctor, has to tell a story. And whoever tells the right story gets to live, and everyone else dies, or anyone else who tells the wrong story. Ready? Imagine! Imagine! Imagine the story! It's absolutely fantastically drawn, it's brilliantly written, and my goodness, that image is terrifying. I mean, I have not seen... That is scarring, but that is amazing. And it's all continuing to the same point, because it's all about this uh, whole Joker thing. But yes, so the last part of it is very good. But everything before that, everything in the actual Endgame story, I just, I cannot see a single thing in this which is actually worth praising. And yet, constantly, I'm seeing fantastic reviews of this. Don't waste your money on it. Do not waste your money on this. I did, and I regret it. But it ended on a cliffhanger, so I suppose now I'm going to have to get the next one anyway. I'm the disgruntled reviewer, and I'm particularly disgruntled that I'm going to have to buy the next one. Okay, and here's another thing. How on earth is Batman so ready and able to fight after he's been stabbed in the stomach? I don't know. I think it's... I think it's because of Batman! Okay. So, I shall see you guys next week when I get round to reviewing the Teen Titans Go episode, Legs. Only reason I didn't uh, review that one today is because I had a bit of computer trouble, so I couldn't convert the episode into an MP4 file. So, I'll, um, I'll be uh, doing that next week. Cheerio!
because I'm Batman!